Okay, now, I've changed my mind. We won't go on with critical review today. It's all heavy, isn't it? And I think we did a heavy session. <laughs> Your brains probably feel like toothpaste. Fair enough. So, something a little bit lighter and something we need to do anyway. Because Another language. Another language, that's right. It's called Australian. <laughs> and um, we are going to watch this film at some point. Then probably oh, next yeah, week. Yeah. It's a famous play. One of it's one of David Williamson's. David Williamson I've mentioned. I'll open up the library in a minute and uh, we might find some copies of that play script there. I would encourage you to borrow the play script and read the whole thing. Whenever you make a film of anything, it's always kind of shorter usually, isn't it, than, than the original. If you think of, you know, you make a film of a novel, you don't include all the conversation in the book. If you make a film of a play script, you don't include everything. When they make a film of Shakespeare, they cut out a whole lot of lines, you know. Pretty interesting artistic decision about what lines you cut, you know. Anyway, same with Don's Party. If you read the play script, it's actually probably a third or double the size. But uh, I've listened to it a few times, and as I've listened, just written down the slang. Some words here are not slang, but they're probably new. I'd say 90% of it's slang. There are a few phrases or words that are not, but I think, well, they're new to you and they need a little bit of explanation, so they're there as well. I think you'll obviously understand the film better. It's Basically, it's a party of dogs. Him and his wife, they throw a party. Collocation, you throw a party. Slam. You have a party. And various people turn up. Some very old friends, some new. And in amongst the new friends uh, are people who are a bit politically different from his old mates. And this, this is at least the beginning of one of the several tensions. I mean, no theatre is interesting if everyone just gets along. That's kind of boring, everyone goes to sleep. You know, there's conflict in it for all sorts of different reasons. One of them is political. But also there's a lot of uh, people... Uh, it's, it's set in 1969. Robert Menzies has been in for, not 23 years, but it must be minus three. He's been in for 20 years. Australia's a very conservative place, formally, but through the 60s there are all these social attitudes that are changing, feminism comes along, you know, lots of <coughs> different attitudes, and that's what you see in this play, <coughs> the sexual revolution. And what that means is some people are having quite free sex and that's disturbing other people. And, yet, and some of them are kind of doing that, saying, oh, I'm liberated, but actually they're still really sexist. So a lot of it's exploration of these changing attitudes. Um, yeah, so it's a, whole, it's a whole lot of interesting issues here. Anyway, there's a lot of slang, as you would imagine, at any party. And David Williamson as I've said, has a great ear for Australian language. So he's captured a lot of slang. It sounds very natural, like what a lot of people would say at a party. Um, probably a bit rougher than a lot of parties some people would go to. Interesting, uh, by the time you finish watching it, will you say, hmm, is that the average Australian party? I'll leave you to... We can discuss that. <laughs> anyway, here's, here's the slang. John, yeah. when, when somebody says, oh, it's totally When clear. somebody says, somebody, anybody, everybody, anything is singular. Yes. Yeah. When somebody says, oh, it's totally blurred, blurred out means... Blurt, blurt. When you blurt something out, it just comes out automatically without sort of... Control. Maybe you're trying to control it, but it just comes out. Blurt. Uh, they, they, when they use it about uh, talking or about what they use for their... Well, whenever, when anything just comes out, it's, it's always concerned with, <coughs> with saying something. Somebody, he blurted out, the police interrogated him. And he tried to stop saying the person's name, but eventually he just blurted it out. 
It just came out. Um, about the events, we don't talk about events. No, an event can't blur. It's only a person, and a per it's about a person <coughs> speaking. It's not slang, it's, it's, it's not slang. just yeah, a, a normal word, it's just a particular description of someone speaking. Okay, I'm going to go through the first page and I'm going to hand it over to you to figure out what these mean. All right, we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's just have a look at them. Now, we've done this sort of thing before. I imagine in your group, somebody's probably got some existing knowledge of some of these. You're all going to have slightly different experience and different knowledge. Um, what you have to do is, with these, I don't know, 15 or so, put your heads together, and some of you will know some, some of you know others, and over the next 20 minutes, you communicate that information uh, and see if you can arrive at a collective knowledge of these things. A booze up. Well, it's a noun, so what do you think that means? No one's going to give us stuff. You might have heard that. These are pretty common. That buggers that. Now notice it's a verb. What is a bugger as a noun and what's bugger as a verb? What's that in aid of? This little structure, what's that in aid of? Not really slang but fairly spoken. A penguin suit. Not really slang but Don wears at one point a penguin yeah. suit. What do you think that is? The big boys, who are the big boys? When you mention the big boys, are shitting themselves. When somebody shits themselves, what... Does that okay physically someone shits themselves that's pretty clear but what does it mean metaphorically make no mistake about that what does that expression mean it's a common spoken expression I take it that what's this take I take it that what's the person mean not really slang but just a spoken expression so we're getting mixtures of slang and sort of common spoken structures. So I'm just trying to put you know, anything in that is worth noting. It's getting a bit much. It's getting a bit much. That's the whole collocation. It has a particular meaning. Uh, if you said there's not much information, much, sure. But here much sort of means something else in this context. My job's a bit humdrum. Drum. Someone is a bullshit artist. I used this expression just yesterday on Facebook as a joke. Somebody, a bullshit artist. Somebody wrote and said, I'm faking all the answers in my essay. I wrote back and said, You bullshit artist. There's a clue. First of all, what's bullshit? That's what you have to figure out. And then, quite a clever little metaphor a bullshit artist. Somebody who's an artist in bullshit. Somebody might say, uh oh, nature calls. It's a polite way of saying something. Uh, now, this verb, somebody dabbles, dabble. You dabble, this woman in the party, somebody says, what do you do? And somebody else says, oh, she dabbles in the oils. Two expressions here one, what's dabble mean, and what about the oils? Does she play around? Somebody then asks about this woman. Does she play around? What do you think that means? Somebody says in reply, oh, why do you think that? Oh, just a professional hunch. What's a hunch? Okay, now, you wouldn't dismiss it. So, dismiss it. That's one expression. And then out of hand. What does out of hand mean? The two there. Somebody says, ah, a bunch of poofters. Poofta. What is a poofta? All right, now, remember our golden rules. Number one, no electronic devices, no dictionaries. So, no electronic resources. Your first port of call, your first port of call, that means your first option, are the human resources at your table. All right, so I want you to go through the whole lot using the brains, Nancy, not the brains of someone in Beijing. Are you, are you asking a friend? Yes? Okay, ask each other because that obviously encourages speaking and, and if you know something, you've got to try to explain it to somebody else. Very good speaking practice. Let's go 
for a quarter of an hour, no phones, no nothing. Have a listen. Once you get through the whole list and you've asked each other as much as possible and you can get no further, then you can dive for your phones or I'll have this unlocked. You can pull out your slang dictionaries. I would encourage you actually to use stuff in there. I'll get it out and put it around on the table. If we've got some Dinkin dictionaries and Macquarie dictionaries, that'll be very useful. In fact, let's not have phones. Let's just try using Macquarie dictionary. Every I've suggested everybody should have a copy of the green, big green Macquarie. I think I've got at least one in there. And that's got all your formal Australian words, but also a lot of slang and idioms as well. I mean, you have to buy it. You should. You should buy it. It's one of those hard copy references you should just have by the end of the course. If you want to continue language development, I'm sure you do, you're going to need a bunch of key resources. And we've talked about some of these, like the Activator and so on. But it's not any... Uh, look, it might exist as an app. That's an interesting point. You could try the Macquarie Dictionary as an app. Has anybody tried it? I've never tried it. And then, you know, it's quicker and faster, isn't it? You probably have to pay for it. Macquarie used to have a brilliant, it was the best slang website, and it was the Macquarie uh, Dictionary of Australian Slang, and it was up there free. And about 10 years ago, they took it off and turned it into a book, and, you know, it cost you $20. Pity. But, but, you know, if it is an app, my point is they'd probably charge you. But that's probably, might be better than a hard copy. Yeah, I'll get it out in a minute. The spelling. The other one, the Dinkum Dictionary. Remember that one? The, the pure, just slang. If you get the Macquarie, I think a lot of the Dinkum Dictionary would be in the Macquarie. If you get the big fat Macquarie. It's got pretty much everything. In Oxfam, you can generally get it for about $4. I was there two days ago, it wasn't there. But you know, arrive on a day when it's a full moon, and there it is. You know. No, I'd say the Macquarie probably incorporates everything. Okay, so look, a quarter of an hour, try to work your way through them, just a minute or two on each one. See if you can explain them. If not, move on. I mean, <laughs> Macquarie. Macquarie. He was an early. There it is. Marley, you want the spelling? Have a look on your iPhone or whatever. You might find it as an app. Macquarie Dictionary. That would be pretty good if it were an app. I mean you could carry it around everywhere with you. Can I